Welcome back to Loon's Leaves, y'all. Today we're talking about pest control. All right, y'all. So like I said before, today we're going to cover pest control because we do not want any pests. We want our plants to stay happy and healthy throughout this winter season, especially because as it's getting colder outside, things are going to come inside and they're going to want to hitch a ride on your plants. And we do not want that. So in order to help you prevent um, pests from the start, I would avoid taking your plants from outside back inside and vice versa. Keep bringing them in and out and in and out. It's going to cause a lot of pests to be attracted to your plants because when you bring a plant outside, it's nice and warm from being inside. It's clean. It's fresh. Pests are going to notice that difference and they're going to want to attach themselves to your plant. Same thing if they're already on your plant when you bring them back inside, you run the risk of A, your plant having pests and B, it infecting all your other plants that you have in your home if you have more than one. So I like to try to avoid bringing my outside plants back in. Um, it can be really hard if you love the look of tropical plants and you live up north like I do in Pennsylvania. I mean, some of these tropical plants are gorgeous. We want to move them outside to our patio areas in the summertime because um, sometimes it can be beneficial for them to be outside during those seasons. But then when we bring them back in, um, that acclimating back into home life can really mess with your plant and then pests can occur. So right off the bat to try to avoid pests, Stop bringing them in and out if you can. Secondly, when you purchase a plant, try to buy a plant without pests. And that sounds pretty obvious, but it can be really hard when we go into a big box store or a nursery, we see a gorgeous plant we wanna buy and we just bring it home instinctively. Um, I have a huge problem bringing plants home that are more sickly looking or need to be rehabbed for lack of a better word, because I just, want to help them and make them better but a lot of the time the reason they are looking sickly is because they have underlying um, issues with pests that I can't see. So if you are going into a big box store make sure you're really checking those leaves thoroughly, looking through your whole plant, looking at the soil, the trunk if it has like a more barky like texture like this guy here. Look at every aspect of that plant and making sure that it's ready to bring home. Now Again, with bringing a new plant home, there's always the risk that you didn't catch something in the store or maybe something came up from the soil that you didn't get a chance to see. Um, and so you're going to want to follow the guide that I made last week for bringing a new plant home. Um, I'll have it linked below. It was last week's video. It gives you all kinds of um, tips for how to acclimate a new plant into your home. And you're going to want to follow that same kind of guideline if you're bringing a plant from outside to inside now for that winter season. So other than trying to avoid pests altogether, there's also many ways that you can get rid of pests. Um, one of those ways is neem oil. So neem oil is probably my favorite out of anything that you can buy that um, will work for fighting against pests to prevent them from attaching themselves to your plants while also getting rid of pests that it already has. So it's a natural based oil. It's gonna smother any um, pests that are already there and kind of kill them off that way with larva and um, adult pests. It will also make a slippery surface or a surface that they don't want to attach themselves onto with your plant. So it can prevent pests as well. It's all natural, like I said before, so it's safe to use around your family and your kids and things like that. It's also safe for use around pets, and best of all, it's safe for your plants. So, I showed this in my last video about bringing new plants home too, because it's always good to use a little neem oil, especially when you're not sure if your pet plant has any kind of thing on it. And to do that, I give a soft rag a good spray, if the leaves are bigger on the plant, you can spray this directly on the plant like this bird of paradise here. You could go right onto it. In fact, that's why my bird of paradise is looking pretty shiny because it has been wiped down with neem oil. And if you don't have a big plant, you can kind of sandwich your rag around one of the leaves. So I'm gonna try to, maybe I'll do it here because this guy's right in the front. So I kind of put it right in the middle of the rag 
and then pulled gently from the bottom of the leaf to the top. And I automatically just covered the back of the leaf and the front of the leaf in one swoop, especially if your plant has more foliage and it's gonna take a little bit longer to neem oil everything. So I like this like clothed sandwich method, or you could spray it directly on and wipe off the leaves of the excess neem oil. So I'll work on finishing this guy later. Neem oil, the only downside to neem oil is it's smelly. It has a weird smell. It's not really a good smell, it's not really a bad smell. It's just a very weird smell. It might make some of you feel nauseous. So um, just be aware that that might occur when using your neem oil. But overall, affordable and works really well. Probably the best um, way that I can recommend in this video on how to get rid of pests and prevent pests all at the same time. So it's an all in one um, tool. Uh, along with neem oil, if you're really sensitive nose and you don't really like to use the neem oil, you can use a uh, dish soap and water solution. Any kind of soap and water solution should work. I would stay away from anything scented like for your body and things like that. But dish soap and stuff will be fine. And you can just spray down your plant with that soap. It again will create kind of like a slippery surface that those pests aren't going to want to be on. It will make things bitter for the pests, so they're not going to want to munch on your plants. And it will also kill any larva that's going to be in the soil of your plant when you water it. So you can water it with soapy water and it will be fine, but I would do a diluted um, concentrate of that. So maybe not 50-50 like I would if I was spraying it on my plant's foliage. Maybe you would do like a 25-75% water. So 25% dish soap, 75% water. So it's super diluted for that watering. Along with that, I learned through doing research for this video that you can also use pine sole. I think it's called pine sole or pine sole. I'll um, put a picture up. And all I remember is the commercials when I was a child were this wonderful woman going, power the pine. You got to use the power of the pine. So Use that power of the pine to kill all your pests in your plants. So you can mix that with water and use it to water your plants and it will kill all the larva that might be in those um, roots or by the soil in any way. So pine sole will work if you don't have dish soap as well as a cleaner called Simple Green. I'll also put a picture up of Simple Green. Simple Green is great overall. I use it for cleaning outdoor patio furniture. My parents have used it to power wash their house before because Simple Green can go back down into the earth or the soil, be washed into the waterways, and it's safe for biological life. So it's not going to be toxic or ruin anything as far as that goes. Um, so you can use Simple Green too. However, with Simple Green and Pine Sole, you are going to get a strong minty pine smell with both of those. And so if you're not into that you might want to stick with the dish soap root. Um, not as effective as neem oil, um, either of those options, but will still make a difference in some way and will definitely help with larva specifically. So if you have certain pests like spider mites, spider mites are very tiny spiders, um, mites, and they create little micro um, webbing on your plants. That's how you can kind of see if you have a spider mite infestation, if you notice small little um, webbing start to happen. And sometimes you'll even see them crawling all over your foliage or especially like the trunky stalky parts of some of your plants. You'll be able to see them there. And um, that will kill their larva as well as fungus gnats. Fungus gnats are the bane of my existence. They are around, I mean, I don't even know if you can see, there's probably like two or three attracted to this light that I have that are flying around um, in my room at the moment. And they're just so attracted to the soil and the moisture that I have in, in our home that they will lay their larva in um, lots of different soils. So I'm excited to use that pine sole technique to get rid of those um, fungus gnats. Another pest that you are going to probably see in your houseplants if you have a pest problem are mealybugs. They'll be smaller white bugs that do not move often. So they can oftentimes be mistaken for fungus or just little spots on your leaf, but they're there and they don't move often and they kind of look like fuzz. So I'll put a picture of them. Mealybugs are not great. They'll munch on your plants and so will scale. Scale can really kill off um, some 
plants pretty badly, so I'll put a picture of scale up because they're kind of a little harder to describe for me. But all of those um, soapy um, mixtures will help defeat or um, destroy all four of those kinds of pests, as well as others, if there's any others. But those are pretty much the top four that I see often. Um, along with soapy mixtures, neem oil, and preventing it all together, you can also pick up these houseplant sticky stakes, as they're called. I'll link them down below. There's many different kinds. Um, they come in different shapes and sizes and stuff too. And it's basically fly paper that you can use in your plants. I specifically like this brand because it offers, and I'll hold it up here in a minute, it offers a stake that you can stick in your plants. The fly paper is double-sided with the stick. So the flies will crawl into that little hole there and get stuck. And they'll also get stuck on the outer edge of the fly paper. And so it's a really effective way of cutting down on the population of adult pests that you have, especially when it comes to fungus gnats. But I've also noticed other smaller bugs and pests crawl onto these as well. So not just for fungus gnats, but that's primarily what I use them for. So this is what they look like little stake and then they have strips that come with it and you have to peel off the um, film that's on either side so right now they're not sticky they're just paper and then you peel off that film and you can tuck it into the stake here I had a roommate once who forgot to peel off the film and was wondering why if there were no flies on the sticky paper is because it wasn't sticky so there you can see where the flies or other bugs will crawl into there and get stuck and then also out here. I find these to be particularly effective um, because they kind of look like foliage. Like if you were to put that in here, it is the same shape as the foliage. It's going to be on a stalk like the foliage, give something for the flies to climb up and then get stuck on. So pretty effective. However, I find these to be kind of gross after a while because they're effective so they're gonna have hundreds of little flies and other bugs stuck on there and it can get to be not aesthetically pleasing at all so I don't like to use these often but when I do I try to stick them in a plant that has bigger foliage that also comes down kind of across the soil level here so I can disguise where that sticky stake is and then when I have guests or other people come over they're not staring at a stake full of dead bugs. You know, kind of like cringy. So, but pretty effective. Um, they will not kill off an infestation entirely because they are not designed to get larva of any type. However, they will greatly cut down on your population of adult pests. Um, along with that, a way to deter pests or cut down on a population is by covering your soil level in some sort of rocks. So I have a plant right here and I'll show a close up of it. And I had some little rocks on there. Um, and then I realized my dog was taking away the little rocks. So I purchased bigger rocks and he doesn't seem to care. He will also take the larger rocks away as well. So I will be making a separate video on how to keep your pet pets out of your plants. But for now, um, I'm going to leave these here because they're also helping to deter pests away from the soil. So they don't want to lay their eggs on rocks and things like that. They're going to have to crawl deeper and it's going to make it harder for them to get to that soil level. So rocks can be a bit effective in helping deter those pests away, as well as the sticky traps. Now to go on to something a little bit more unconventional. Um, a lot of people use this in their outdoor gardens, and I learned about it through the research I was doing for this video as well. My sister told me about it additionally, um, is to use cinnamon. Now, I read that some people will use the cinnamon right out of their spice cabinet that you use for cooking, and they will sprinkle it on the soil to deter pests away. Mostly in outdoor gardens though, not very often for houseplants. But then I read you can use it for house plants if you find this more natural cinnamon. It's called Celon cinnamon. I don't know what the difference is. It's more expensive than regular cinnamon. Um, it smells like regular cinnamon, has the appearance of regular cinnamon. I don't know if they add something to the spice cabinet kind that just wouldn't help deter pests. I don't really 
no. But you can use this Salon cinnamon and sprinkle it onto your um, soil levels and it will help deter some bug-like pests, but also furry pests. So if you have an outdoor garden and squirrels and bunnies and other small animals are getting into your um, gardens that way, then you can sprinkle this on and apparently it will deter them. I have yet to try it. I'm looking forward to trying it um, this spring when it comes to my garden outside, but I have been trying it in some closed, enclosed terrariums um, in order to try to deter fungus gnats. And I have it specifically in this one underneath the moss here, um, sprinkled on top of some LECA and it's working really well. I have not seen a single um, fungus gnat flying around in there and I usually always see at least one or two a day and I haven't seen any and it's been a whole month. So I think it's working. It's also good for keeping fungus down. Um, so kind of will act like an activated charcoal, which I've talked about in one of my other videos and I'll talk about again. Um, and that helps deter fungus and things like that and keep humidity levels even. Same with the cinnamon. So it seems to be working for me. I don't know if it'll work for you, but maybe give it a try if you're out of other options. The only thing that you have to keep in mind is I have a dog and he has treats with cinnamon in it and I've been trying to keep him out of my plants. So I don't wanna put cinnamon on some of my house plants that are lower to the ground or not in an enclosed um, like terrarium because I'm afraid it would attract him to want to dig in the soil if I sprinkled some cinnamon and made it smell good for him. So if you have pets, maybe not your best bet. I've been trying it in terrariums and it seems to be doing well. Another thing, and this is the last thing, and it's kind of super strange. I'm going to be putting up some pictures on the screen. So if you get uncomfortable with pictures of bugs and things like that, maybe click ahead um, a few seconds or so, maybe 30 seconds, so you don't have to see those pictures. But the last thing that you can do to deter pests is using biological predators. And so that basically means you're using good bugs to destroy the bad bugs, to eat the bad bugs. So you can purchase these types of bugs from certain websites. However, I've never done it. I'm not sure about credibility and things like that. You might have to have um, botanical licenses and things like that that I'm unaware of. Um, but I have seen homeowners do this in other YouTube videos who do work in biological fields, so they might have those licenses already through their work, and so therefore they can purchase these types of bugs. Um, there's always the simple ones like ladybugs. You can buy ladybugs on Amazon for science projects for your kids and things like that, or schools, um, and use them in your gardens to deter aphids or have them eat aphids. Um, but there's some other types of bugs that are specifically good for eating and killing mealybugs and ones that are also great for killing spider mites. Um, a few of those are the ladybird beetle, which is similar to a um, ladybug, and a ladybird beetle will eat mealybugs supposedly, as well as a certain type of wasp. Now, this might be your cup of tea. You might be okay with bringing other bugs into your home. To me, I don't want, even if they're good bugs, I don't really want bugs in my house, even if they're as harmless as a ladybug, just because, um, even if they're helping me, but that might be your cup of tea. Maybe you wanna bring on that venture. So those options are out there. And if you're interested in that, definitely look into it further. I'll try to leave some links below for different resources as far as that goes. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it that I have for you on how to deter pests and how to get rid of them right off the bat. Um, with the biological predators, that is something that you might want to save for outdoor purposes only, especially with the wasps. I don't know why, but I wouldn't want a flying creature in my house, um, even if it is doing good for my house plants. So that's up to you. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope this helped you on your houseplant journey and helps you either get rid of pests that you have or prevent them from happening altogether right off the bat. Um, if you have any questions, you can always DM me on Instagram, send me pictures and videos of your plants. I've helped a lot of people 
identify plants that way or solve the um, problems they're having with their plants that way. And we have moved to a new Instagram. So I was using my personal Instagram for that. It got to be a little much. So now Loon's Leaves has its own Instagram um, at Loon's Leaves. It'll be linked at the end of the video as well. So thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you next Sunday.